parts of the body are associated with mitzvahs. The 248 limbs are associated with the prohibited mitzvahs, and the 365 veins and arteries, whatever that means in those terms, are associated with the, po the positive mitzvahs. And or did I get it backwards? I got backwards. Okay. Reverse the number. So if, why are each, why are all the parts of the body associated with mitzvahs? Because the body is, as Georgian pointed out once or twice or a few times, it's very important, is housing the soul. Okay? The body is housing the soul. And the soul is filling up the body, but it's not just in our body. The soul, say this, the Zohar says, fills up the body the way a shoe fills up the foot. But it doesn't stop there. Coming up and out and around us, the neshama goes up, 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 and it connects with Hashem. And each of the mitzvahs is connected with the body part because why? Because our soul is in every, it's in our blood, it's in our skin cells, it's everywhere. Okay? We don't understand how it works, but it's everywhere. So Georgian spoke about the mitzvah of um, eating, making brachas on the food. The primary mitzvah associated with the mouth, there are two of them, is kashras and speech, proper speech. So often when we hear talk about proper speech, we're told, don't talk about Shemara, don't say this, don't do that. We spoke about error earlier in idle chatter. But what we also have to understand is that proper speech isn't just speech that's devoid of negative stuff. Proper speech, can, it's not neutral. It contains Hashem in some way, shape, or form. Now, it's okay, of course. Now, speech is intimately bound up with the breath. Because in order to speak, we have to breathe. In order to see, it's good to be, you have to be alive and breathing, but breathing isn't actually necessarily directly related to seeing, at least as far as I know. Hearing, but with the speech bound up with it. Rebbe Nachman teaches us. Um, he teaches us every time we exhale and we breathe in again. like a new person is born. Breathing in and of itself is extremely important to be a Jew. So what I'd like to do is share with you a very special breath that Rebbe Nachman speaks about. It's, a, it's called the crutch. I call it the boy breath. <laughs> um, many, many years ago, I, I modern day ready right Rabbi Ein Kramer, he um, gave an example of this that was so genuine and so without artifice and so without a filter. And I admire that he could go up in front of a room and do that, that no matter where, where I speak, I do my best to try to include it at least once and that we could all try it. And at first it's a little bit but you try it again and again, you really connect with it. And the reason why we do this crutch and make this sound, boy, it's a real Yiddish sound, right? Why do we make this? Because we're sighing from what? Yearning for Hashem. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Not, not everything I organized this weekend went as planned because I'm not a great organizer and I really wanted to just make the whole weekend connect to you and oh, 
I hope that people felt some of that connection and that they really were excited by it and want more. And oh, I couldn't eat this morning because I was so nervous that things were going in order. And now I'm afraid to eat because I'm afraid to eat anything, Georgia. <laughs> She wasn't looking. You don't tell her. Why? Because of what we 
spoke about earlier ones, that tefillah needs, requires Yeshua Hadas in order to be effective and to be a tefillah of connection. And we know that during the times of the Beis Mikdash, that people would prepare for prayer. We also know the Hasidic also would prepare for prayer sometimes many hours before they actually dove. And what do we do? We rush to the sitter to get the davening in. Okay. So it's good if you have the time to prepare to speak to the show. So for those of you who weren't here yesterday, many of you do know, but I'll just go over briefly. He told it to you. It's very simple. Rebbe Nachman says it's the greatest thing. It's the biggest thing you can do. And all it is at its essence is talking to Hashem about what's on your mind and in your heart. I know I believe the point over and over again. But Rebbe Nachman says no one can achieve spiritually without it. This is what prayer used to be, and it's what prayer should be. And although there are formulas, the main thing to keep in mind is to try to connect as honestly as possible with whatever is really troubling you, making you happy, you have questions, you have solutions. I want to encourage everybody that no matter what you hear, we heard earlier, I don't know who said it, but somebody told me they heard that Rebbe Nachman said to turn his lessons into prayer. Rebbe Nachman's Sefer, who take to fillers, are prayers, written prayers about Rebbe Nachman's lessons. But all the topics we've covered this weekend and much, 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 much more. We, too, should turn things that you have questions about, that inspire us about, Anything we heard from Rebbe Nachman, we should turn that into a prayer. Hashem, I heard something today. Um, I heard something today about anger. Could you help me understand it? Could you help me make the positive changes into my life that I need to make? I heard something about what I would call maybe conscious eating, awareness, and, and holy eating. Help me make those changes into my life. Or let me just let me just learn more about it. Hashem, help me. Hashem. Help me talk to you, Hashem. I don't know how to talk to you. How many times do we run into a block and we don't have the words? Rebbe Nachman says it's okay at that time to just say, Oi! <laughs> to just say, to just breathe out, to just sigh, to just stretch. <clears throat> the words aren't there, but the yearning for connection and the yearning and what's part of the connection are the answers to our problems. That's what the connection is. The yearning is there. Okay. Now, um, the most, another important thing about this book is that you speak to Hashem in your own words. <coughs> they have to be your words. And as we spoke about our Shabbaton, for some of you who were here, those words can be actually a gift from Hashem to you because Hashem who creates everything and supplies everything also will help give us the words of the tefillah the same way he gave David HaMelech the words of tefillah. He gave him the words and David HaMelech wrote them. Do you have a question? Oh, I just wanted to say that many times if I'm a little bit anxious about something I have talk to someone about, or it's an important thing, I often say, show me the right thoughts in my mind, and the right words in my mind. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is what the truth does. That is what our, all our grandmothers did, and hopefully that we're learning to do. Hashem, I'm waking up this morning, and I'm thanking you. We do that. Hashem, I'm going to have some coffee, and I need to say the Brahma with Kabbalah, please help me. Hashem, I need to get the kids to hear, and I need to prepare.
prepared for breakfast here. Please help Hashem. Please help. Uh, please help me find a parking spot. Yeah. That's very important. Uh, yeah. Parking spot. Yes. Okay. Always say that before we cross whatever bridge. Okay, so there you go. We ask Hashem for everything. We depend on Him for everything. Rebbe Nachman says that if we get things in our life without properly praying for them, it's, hold on, it's not an insult, but it's like a dog, like an animal. Because Hashem gives all the animals their food. They technically don't have to praise Him and thank Him. Okay. Technically, they don't have to. They get their food fed. We also know that others in this world also get their food. They get their sustenance. Hashem provides for them. But a Jew who takes sustenance without speaking to Hashem about whatever that sustenance is, a checkbook, a bank account, a new wardrobe, whatever it is, we take that and we just take it and not ask Hashem for it, acknowledge it, and thank Him, we're living without that connection. Yes? It's interesting when you mention it, because we live in Russia and Heinz, and we constantly say Tefillah is for your and Tefillah for your parking spot. <laughs> and, you know, the, the thing is, though, when we get it, whatever you get, thank you should thank Hashem a hundred times a day. Mm -hmm. you know, really make it a point to always say thank you, thank you. That's right. We do. We have to thank Hashem. And, you know, it's easy to thank Hashem when we get the, uh, the, the revealed blessing. When we get the parking spot, when we get the clean bill of health, when we get the whatever reprieve from whatever uh, was hanging over us, it's easy to thank Hashem for that. Okay? Even for the hard thing. But, right, right. The, 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 the hard thing is to go into that time and to talk to Hashem about the suffering. And then when you have reached dots, when you have attained more awareness, more knowledge, whatever our levels are, everybody's different. But the dots that's for you right now, okay, when you have attained that, you'll be able to thank Hashem for the things that appear like suffering. Why? Because they won't be suffering. Perception. It changes your perception. It won't be suffering. Um, those of you who were here Friday night know that I probably shouldn't be walking. Like, I shouldn't be standing up right and walking. I did bring a cane, but I didn't use it. Um, June 14th, I got a ruptured disc, and I was told by this doctor that I would be using at least two canes for at least six months. And um, I didn't listen to him. Um, and I proceeded to, um, I did give myself plenty of bed rest, I had to, no choice, I didn't have any beyond. Um, but I did um, increase my tefillas and increase my exposures. And I began to thank Hashem for the pain. That was hard. I was able to thank Him for the disc and this and that, but I began to thank Him for the pain. I said, I don't know why it's here. Because I know it's from you, Hasha, and I can tell you with all honesty, the tears were running down my face. I don't know how I had the strength to do it, but when when I knew that healing should be the topic of this one for Ellen, this shock, particular shock and tone, it was motivating. Now I really feel looking at it. I was like, my back hurts a little bit, but like nothing. I'm, you know, running around. And I feel like that's part of the reason that I had to go through that. And I want to thank you, Hashem, because all the healing topics with all these interesting speakers and topics that everybody needs to hear, everybody can take something from them, came out of my herniated disc, <laughs> so to speak. So I reveal a little of my own stories to you. Um, so, the idea is, is, has, is there anybody in this room who wasn't familiar with this motivus before they came here today? <coughs> Were you here on the first the Shabbos conversation? Yes. Okay. okay. So, <coughs> I want us to have time to 
make his own. This, the schedule was a little bit curfluy. And um, we have these gorgeous grounds. And it's a great opportunity to go walk on the grounds and speak to Hashem. It's 28 acres. Wow. wow. There are goats, if you like goats. There are geese, if you like geese. I like goats. <laughs> There's a swimming pool, if you feel like you'd rather swim. There's more food, if you'd like to <laughs> nosh. Georgiana will go the other or she won't look. <laughs> and, um, and if you'd like to learn more about this boat of this, I know somebody raised their hand that they didn't know a lot about it. I'd be happy to just talk to a small group, and I really want to encourage everybody to go out and thank Hashem for this great day and this great Shabbaton, and the people who won prizes can thank Hashem for that, and, and we all really want some prizes. Yes. And, um, I just want to also thank you all for coming, and I hope you will stay in touch with BRI Women and Breslov Research Institute, and come on our Uman trips, and come on our Shabbatons, and also, we have classes for women at breastlovecampus.org. And we also have classes for men and women, too. And if you want to do some reading, we spoke about Azamra over the Shabbaton. I've written about 15 articles at breastlove.org about it. There's probably 50 more from many other people. Go there and read. That's the topic of holy self-esteem, which we spoke about. And um, please continue to stay. Thank you so much. Thank you.